Alex, tell me please when you are start the recording. Okay. Hello, dear um, Institute participants. My name is Ivan Mikolkin, and this is session we will present today our um, education program called uh, Open Endedness. And uh, as you see in the screen, this is our new site, and uh, we already launched a few courses. And uh, today, I love to introduce our science director of science, Anatoly Levinchuk. Anatoly, please. Yeah. Okay. I should screen share. Mm -hmm. Oops. It should be. Yeah, we see it. Show them. Yeah, great. And today I try to introduce you to our open endedness curriculum at our institute. And this curriculum is curriculum about how to be active, how to be an engineer of our world and change this world to better. Uh, engineering is a practice of changing the physical world, and it means not mental world, but physical world to the better. And we have several different variants of what is to the better. Uh, first, this is ethical answers. Ethic is a science. Uh, what is goodness, what is evil, and different people in different uh, kind of this science, in different branches of ethic, have different answers, what is the better physical world. Uh, but we have not only variants uh, from ethics, but variants of answer from physics, and evolutionary theory. For example, we have entropy and physics tell that there is no question that some kind of asteroid or other uh, universe forces, forces uh, can broke all the civilization and we should somehow uh, avoid these events. And this will be better. Uh, maybe this surprise, uh, Bayesian surprise, if we uh, assess it in statistics, uh, this surprise will be not tomorrow, but after several millions of years. But nevertheless, the better is survival of the life itself. Maybe life on Earth, maybe life on Earth and near universe. Maybe life, uh, this is a unique uh, event in the universe history. But this is the better. And uh, one more theory, that is uh, the life uh, have active inference. This is embodied life and embodied in the universe as a physical world. And we should simply have minimal energy, and this is a better. And minimal energy for what? For disappearing. And this is the absolute answer. And no goods, no uh, other answer. We simply surviving. 
And this is very interesting because we have uh, in social theories like proxiology or Mises proxiology that human activity, this is avoiding of something, maybe avoid, avoiding of something in the future, uh, but not achieving of something. Because there is limitless achievements can be if we survive. If we not surviving, we have no achievement at all, no happiness, nothing. And this is engineering is a practice of change in physical world to the better, to the uh, prosperity of civilization in long uh, in long run. But today we live in very interesting time uh, that we call singularity. And this is idea of Werner Winch. Uh, this is 1983. And this is uh, only popularization of good studies uh, even earlier. Uh, that we have artificial intelligence that will develop artificial intelligence. And after this, artificial intelligence will be enhanced and augment itself. And after this, uh, all the physical world around us will be changing so quickly that we, as a human, can't understand uh, what is happening. And this is exponential scale of changing. And uh, we see this uh, in Tim Burton uh, diagram that uh, we have artificial intelligence in the level of ant, of bird, of chimpanzee, dump human, it is already today. And level of Einstein is not very different in this scale from uh, level of intelligence of uh, dump human. And it seems uh, that singularity is near. Moreover, uh, already we have scientific work works, scientific papers that describe work of artificial intelligence that invent integration uh, circuits, chips, and uh, these chips used to invent more chips. This more powerful artificial intelligence chip, graphical processing unit, uh, help invent new algorithms of neural networks. And we already have this process of artificial intelligence enhancing. And uh, when we see multipliers of this enhancing, uh, this is about 10 times, 200 times uh, more quick uh, finding of different solutions. This is very quickly, and uh, according to several opinions, we already have singularity, uh, but this singularity is uh, simply not even uh, evenly distributed. And uh, this is the time when we should invent how we have comprehend in such a world and how we can have some kind of uh, meaningful activity for betterment of this world. And the answer uh, is not uh, human versus artificial intelligence, but combining them. Uh, augmenting intelligence by a human, uh, this is cyborg, cyber organization. This is some kind of transhuman uh, curriculum. Uh, up to now, I have a thesis that you are already cyborgs. Uh, for example, you can try it, live 
for uh, one day or a couple of days your smartphone at home and go to the city. It will be very interesting. This is like some part of your organism is missed. And you will be simply biological human without Google, without uh, navigation, without your friends online, without books. And this is uh, not to be a cyborg. You already uh, cyborg. But uh, my thesis uh, is further that this is cybernetic organisms uh, in the past. You have not only cybernetic organisms, but cybernetic organizations. All the corporations that we have now is cybernetic organizations that uh, have their togetherness of these collectives of people and computer. Uh, they have in computers, but not in people. The glue that uh, have uh, linked all the people and all the people in organizations is not people themselves, but computer programs that help support attention of this organization to some kind of activity. Issue tracker, for example, as uh, productivity software, databases, this is the mechanisms of attention control in organizations. And this is the mechanism of uh, attention control uh, in uh, humans. And this is control is not in the biological mind up to now, mainly, but mainly uh, this is uh, control in uh, exocortex. Uh, and this is the cornerstone of our curriculum. We have a program of augmenting intelligence uh, with exocortex and uh, this exocortex uh, can be as simple as flip chart or paper and pencil but we prefer of course computer and keyboard and this is very interesting point that we should study not a biological human we should study human with his computer and even his computer if needed and then we should study collective of humans with their computers we should study organizations and this is uh, peter singe uh, concept of learning organizations for sure and uh Operations, we can discuss separately, operations in physical world. Um, we can uh, discuss that this is not a paper and pencil approach, but we have uh, some kind of uh, artificial intelligence programs and then can calculate and have a uh, suggestion of some kind of solution or uh, have some kind of decisions and performing in the physical world. This is uh, autonomous uh, computers with, uh, uh, within robots, for example. And we have exocortex, exobody, and we have active inference. Active, uh, this means embodied inference. And uh, we have support from standard model of consciousness, uh, Gratana, for example, and we have another concept of consciousness, uh, integration information theory of consciousness, uh, Tononi. And this is very interesting because this is a unique approach of our institute because we want to teach not people, but we want to teach cyborgs. 
And thus, we have no human versus artificial intelligence, but we have augmented intelligence, humans plus computers in networks and network of net networks of such humans with computers. And we will study to people live in this, uh, such a world, computer to exist in such a world, and uh, in the end we will have prosperity. And how we can save this world? I just now I already tell it. Uh, for the first, we should understand better what is evolution. And how we can, with usage of computers, provide this evolution better. For example, computer can simulate a uh, physical world with a speed more than usual time. And we should use it, for sure. And then we should enhance the intelligence of individuals by teaching people to think and skills. And this is our strong point, and we already published several courses in Russian and several courses in English. And we call these thinking skills uh, intelligence stack of thinking practices. And then we should strengthen the intelligence of individual computer programs and develop distributed collective thinking and ensure the proper level of physicality uh, and then we should have body control for the people simply fitness uh, usual fitness physical culture and then have something with the uh, robots for our exa body. And uh, this exa body can be autonomous robots and not so autonomous like exa uh, skeleton, for example. Next, uh, we see these fundamental thinking practices that is in the base of our curriculum. You see many, many, many disciplines with uh, some kind of uh, Greek words like logics or semantics. And uh, we have no such word plus epistemology. For example, uh, we have different things, uh, research and rationality in epistemology. And we have ontology, but ontology and logics, logics and algorithmics separately. Uh, we have physics and mathematics. All this, all the usual uh, things that uh, we usually have in university. But we organize this in some kind of a stack. From ontology point of view, these disciplines uh, comprise some kind of lattice, but we simplify this, and uh, all this lattice we have in a stack form, simply for pedagog pedagogical uh, purposes. And this is uh, for teaching purposes, uh, very simply. And on the top of this stack, this is methodology, like theory of human and not only human activity. This was uh, theory of human activity maybe 20 years ago. But today, this is uh, theory of agent activity. And uh, this is true science, how it usually uh, presented how activity can be discussed and systems engineering this is state of the art uh, normative science normative methodology how you should do 
uh, this is deontic modality, how you should, how you ought to do something to have a result. And this is systems engineering. And after this, uh, all this specialization for complexity uh, or evolutionary level of substance, uh, this will be applied engineering. In substance, you have chemical synthesis, engineering of hardware, uh, cyber physical systems like uh, nuclear uh, power station or airplanes, avionics, and creators. This is genetic engineering, medicine, agriculture, person psychotherapy, education, and up to level of humankind where we have no applied engineering at all. Because nobody now thinking about developing of humankind. But wait, uh, we already have NASA that try to use uh, spacecraft, spacecraft uh, to have impact on asteroids to avoid Earth. And this is preventing of surprise on the level of humankind. And we have different projects, but rare now, and we have no special applied engineering for this, but several people already pay money and already uh, spend their time on the products in humankind level. Uh, this is very interesting uh, di diagram because uh, we have systems engineering that is scale-free and independent of system types. And very different system types on every level of complexity. This is level of evolutionary complexity, and this was uh, shown on a work of uh, Van Turin, Katz Nilsson, Kunin, Wolf. That uh, this is uh, level of evolution, and uh, this is system levels and levels of complexity that corresponding to uh, evolution. Uh, Evolution uh, uh, evolution level and uh, evolution spikes uh, and it is very interesting how we uh, work with all these ethics, aesthetics, research, rationality, logics, and other subjects that help us provide more and more deep, more and more uh, applied uh, kind of engineering. Every time when we see in techno evolution a new type of projects, new type of systems, we should invent it. And we can use, uh, for example, logics and algorithmics in their current form to invent this. And uh, we can use general education, general curriculum in intelligence tech discipline as a form to prepare people and their computer to novel situations novel projects and to deal with new type of systems that never existed. Thus, we preparing people to the projects that no them see today. Neither we as the teachers see today. But we prepare people and computers to the future situations because we give them general knowledge that support 
intelligence. Intelligence, uh, this is a property of agents that permit them deal with very different set of circumstances. And the more universal these circumstances, the more universal, the more augmented their intelligence. For example, uh, people deal with situations more different in kind than, for example, cats and dogs. People have more intelligence than cats and dogs. And uh, this is uh, very well discussed in artificial intelligence today. And we simply have uh, these uh, papers in a base of our work. And after this, we have a trade-off. Will we teach state-of-the-art disciplines in this stack? Or we will teach like everywhere else? And uh, we chosen teach to SOTA, teach to state of the art. Pro this decision, we will train the elite. And cons, we should withstand the criticism of the bulk of the peloton. Because uh, in many universities, they study not quantum-like, for example, uh, decision theory. But logic based, Boolean logic based decision theory, and not yet Bayesian based. But very contemporary, this is Bayesian based uh, decision theory. But uh, we should point that uh, more contemporary, more uh, state of the art is quantum light decision theory because this is better supported by experiments and by Bayesian decision uh, uh, theories is falsified in experiments and thus we will have critics uh, that we study and then we teach not yet proven theories but uh, we answer that no, uh, there is no proof of theories, but we have in theories only classification. We are Popperian. Uh, we have Popperian uh, epistemology with amendment of Deutsch, amendment of Pearl, and uh, Thus, we not teach uh, falsified uh, theories. And after this, we should have uh, some kind of modularity in our teaching. And this is modularity uh, we present here. This is architectural decisions for courses. And you see it in a table. And you see that uh, we have different disciplines and different courses and many courses teach us uh, concepts from several disciplines and we have a curriculum from these courses that should be taken in sequence and this is suggestion of our sequence you have... Я правильно понимаю, что он... Ой, сори. О? Ну, we have... Uh, we have uh, main courses uh, that are devoted to intellect stack. And then we have applied courses 
they devoted to different uh, kind of uh, systems. And you see, this is uh, very sparse matrices. <laughs> and uh, we have uh, many of work ahead of us, but we already have at least something and we already have uh, many courses already in Russian. And we already have a small portion of it in English. And after this, we will have these main courses. Uh, that is mastery basement of thinking skills in uh, the head of our students and in their exocortex, in databases on their computers. And after this, it should be endless uh, application courses in different engineering disciplines. And not only engineering, but for example, education, this is engineering of uh, students. We, uh, implementing mastery in the students as a part of students and preparing masters. And uh, this is engineering activity too. And all the changes that we uh, provide to the outer world, this is engineering according to our uh, opinion. And what is kind of engineering we have? We have systems engineering. These systems engineering, uh, we have on a base of third generation of system approach. General system theory from Ludwig von Bertalanffy, Austrian biologist, it is uh, first generation of system approach. And this is about system in its environment. And the maxim of uh, system thinking, uh, for the first, see to the environment, the second, see the part of the system. Always first sight to the outer of system body. And ecology, uh, this is from those times. You should see all this environment, first, system, second. Very good, very productive. And this was the, uh, uh, this was the base of the systems engineering. But system engineering go further. Peter Checkland, a special prominent in this, uh, tell that uh, this is no life, neither a life nor a cycle, because uh, this is not living systems. All these air cosmos systems, all these airplanes, rockets, uh, trains, bridges, this is systems, but not living systems. And they have no life in it and no cycle. But people that create or we will tell construct world uh, that uh, suggested by uh, David Deutsch uh, with his constructor systems. Uh, people construct this system and they perform life cycle practices. And this is the second generation of system thinking. And the third generation, it appeared recently. And uh, this is reflected in our books. Sorry, uh, many of these books in uh, Russian, but some of the books already translated and we presented it uh, there uh, to today. And uh, this is a generation that this is evolving of such a system, not simply construction, but construct construction, but construction 
And after this, uh, open-ended development, continuous development, continuous delivery. And the system uh, look like uh, species uh, and not like organism. And this is very interesting. And this is literature appeared since around 2011, uh, 20, uh, 2011 year. Uh, and surely after several years after Agile Manifesto. And you should uh, see some kind of ag agility in it. And the Lean Startup, uh, one of the main ideas that all of your products, this is hypothesis of product. And we equivalent engineering and science. You have a guess and you have proof of your guess but this is not proof of uh, trying and all non uh, non falsified uh, guess entrepreneurial guess this this is your product and falsified try something else and this will never fit with first uh, attempt and this is the lean startup ideas and this was some kind of revolution in uh, marketing a revolution in engineering and uh, we have systems engineering course that is top of our uh, system, top of our intelligence uh, stack courses we have on a base of contemporary literature and uh, this is literature oh this is literature in the systems engineering course. State of the art, 20 textbooks that mentioned in our book and uh, more footnotes with uh, other literature. Near every cover of the book that mentioned in our course, you see the year of uh, publication and you see that at least uh, one third of these books this is 2022 year this year and several books of last two years about a half of these books issued in a couple of years and only one third issued earlier. And uh, this, uh, what I mean, uh, not eternal knowledge, but state of the art knowledge. Our courses is very contemporary. And when I tell contemporary, I tell not about 10 years span. And I tell about three years span and what is the model of system system thinking because i already tell that we have not uh, a model from bertalanthi not a model from checkland but something else we have a model from all these engineering textbooks and systems engineering standards for example this is a diagram of uh, system thinking essence of state-of-the-art system thinking you see a red circle in the uh, far right this is system of the interest and we have phenome of this system here and memome like genome but for memes that describe our system is in somewhere else place, somewhere in another place. This is in construction bureau, for example, in, uh, in development project environment, in database of constructors 
of designers, but not in the system, like in life cycle, uh, life systems. But you see the first generation of uh, system thinking. You see parts of this system inside system's body, and you see environment. And like in a uh, checkland, you see another creator systems or constructor systems, constructors. They at work in development time. And other systems uh, you see in operations time, in its environments. And you need to discuss DevOps, development and operations together. And this is first. The second, you see this in chain of construction, because uh, like uh, David Deutsch tell us, one constructor can create another constructor. One human can teach another human, that can teach another human, then can construct something in external world, for example. And this is chain of construction and in every uh, in every step of this chain we see memome separated from phenome and this is not evolution this is smart evolution and this is smart evolution techno evolution lead to smart mutations and we need not uh, dose of our system of interest. We can simply change parts of this system, quickly change parts, and we can simulate results of our mutations. This is not randomly mutations results. And after this, uh, we will have very quick evolution and multi. Uh, multi-step in this chain of construction. And this is contemporary third generation system thinking. But uh, this system thinking have in the center of it uh, the same thing, system levels. And test for presence of system thinking is simple. Systematic is not systemic. Systemic, this is when you have system and its environment first, system and its parts. And if you have no system levels in your reasoning, in your inference, you are not systemic thinker. And this is very important. And uh, today, uh, today, papers, today works of, uh, for example, uh, Van Churin, Katz, Nelson, or Fields, Levin, and many others tell us that these system levels, levels in size, very often is levels of uh, complexity. And for example, molecule, this is simple. Cell, this is more complex. Organ, even more complex. Organism, this is the next level. And population, this is more complex. And we have not uh, uh, evolutionary uh, inertia, some kind of uh, equal time of evolution. But we have some kind of evolutionary spikes when molecule uh, form a cell. And for example, cell have uh, form multi-cell organism. And after this, we have population because, uh, uh, because male, female, this is population for sure. No, not organisms. This is population. After this, we have 
our scale of substance, cyber physical systems, this is substance with computers, creator, this is living creator, person, this is, uh, this is usual humans up to now, but uh, up to me, this is already uh, cyborgs. Organization, already cyborg too. Community, this is more complex thing. And we have mimetics that discussing here. Organization, we have management here. Community, we have sociology and uh, many other things. Society, humankind, and uh, Maybe something else, but uh, we have no alliance up to date, but maybe uh, humankind and other alliance kinds. Uh, we have this scalelessness in our curriculum. We teach to deal with system levels uh, with every kind of systems that appear on these levels and we have to pay attention to this layernessness and this is system thinking and this is systems engineering after this we should tell you that we have special uh, method methods of teaching for example we teach System thinking, not usually, for example, you should have some kind of explosion diagram for your system to show that system have a part. No, we present them uh, such uh, system like a dance, for example. This is dynamic system. And uh, you should find part of this dance, simply parts. And after this, we tell that selection of different objects in system, this decomposition, this is a work of a mind. This is a work of attention. Maybe this is a uh, silicon mind. Uh, it's uh, not a problem. But uh, this is not physical explosion into parts, physical breakdown. Uh, like engineer tells, this is system breakdown. Um, no, uh, how you break the dance? And uh, you can break it with your attention. And after people understand what is happening in a dance, for example, you should have at your attention on this second plane figure but not a couple that uh, see directly in your eyes and distract your attention. And after you train your attention and you have self-collectedness, maybe with the help of computer, you will be writing what is the object of your activity. Uh, you will have a functional systems view of operations time. And after this, you will have construction model view of development time. And this is affordances. And affordances, uh, this is world mainly from biology, from evolutionary theory. Yes, uh, we bring all this evolu evolutionary stuff uh, into systems engineering, into usual diagrams of systems engineering. And after this, uh, we have usual schemes, for example, this scheme that shows that if you uh, uh, want to have market disruption, you should disrupt something in the lowest level. For example, you have this computer diagram, computer breakdown on the systems level, computer platforms. And if you have physics change from electrons to quantum, uh, quantum physics from simply electronic circuits. Uh, it will be quantum computing and it will be disruption of all computer ecosystems of all the market of information technologies. And this uh, can be on every market. 
and uh, we already in entrepreneurship. We go from engineering to entrepreneurship. And after this, we can show you a scheme of uh, engineering product. We have operations concept that developed uh, by developer. And this is not requirements because we have not the ontic modality like in requirements, but we have hypothesis. How can operate? We have uh, doxetic modality. I believe that uh, if system will be operate uh, such a way, it will have uh, it will be a great affordance for other systems. It will perform some function in other systems. And we have product manager that is uh, in charge for business case. The suggestion of developer is worth money that we can earn here because we need sustainable systems development. And uh, we have developer and product manager that suggest some kind of the system. And this is functionality, functional uh, definition of the system. And after this, developer suggests system concept uh, because uh, this is invention. What affordances, what model, models we have to fit uh, such a functionality. And architect uh, have a, uh, uh, have a principles of breakdown to the models and uh, these principles permit not only break down the system, but according to convey law, have breakdown of teams that develops this system. And uh, convey law, uh, reverse convey maneuver, uh, they tell it. And we have architect not only system of interest, but constructor system or systems engineer tell this enabling system, enabling constructor system for creation of system interest. And the architecture of this system is connected. And after this, we have entrepreneurship. And Entrepreneurship uh, is uh, have a domain that is similar for science domain. We have product guesses, and we have from the market product participation, uh, like in Popperian science. And we see that this is very similar theories like guesses that falsified and uh, we have uh, changing of these guesses from time to time to completely another guesses. And we have products that changing from time to time to completely another product families. And uh, we can study research and research and development and basic research and basic research and basic development and development like systems engineering the same manner with the same principles and this is a base of our curriculum and we study science we study engineering on a base of augmented intelligence. Augmenting, we have with uh, our intelligence stack and use of technical means of computers. And after this, we hope that our students became 
not student, but masters, and save the world. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. So a lot of concepts you introduced on Anatoly today. Yeah, dear <laughs> audience, do you have questions for Anatoly? And before I believe you ask us something, I'd like to ask you, Anatoly. Yeah, you provided uh, some resources for that uh, was the base of uh, your program. And uh, I have a question, why should I uh, enroll in the courses in the program if I read all of these books, if I read it by my own and will I, uh, will I be the same uh, intelligent, uh, more smarter as we, uh, as we um, pre pre suggest we uh, graduate uh, our students? Uh, first, uh, it's uh, completely useless simply uh, read the textbook. You should uh, read the textbook after this, uh, not after this, during this, you should be writing essays, uh, should be uh, performing uh, different works and exercises that we suggest. This is not books, this is courses. And this is completely another story because uh, I can uh, read uh, a book in a week but with all the exercises, it will be a month. <laughs> it's different in maybe five times. And uh, after this, you should perform all the exercises, not with, uh, the exam uh, with examples and cases from the book, but with cases on your work. And after this, yes, we have uh, hundreds of people that became sufficiently smart to have their career uh, growth and have uh, cases of better in the world after completing of our courses. And uh, uh, this is very interesting question because uh, many of the people that uh, for the first time see me, my activity, activity of my colleagues, and tell you are very bright and you are very genius. Uh, and this is uh, impossible to be such a talented person as you. Uh, but this is completely wrong because I am personally very ordinary. But I have enhanced my intelligence with the courses that I wrote because I am the first reader of my courses. And after this, I became such a clever man with system thinking. And when my students complete these courses, they appear the same as me and uh, often even more clever and more quickly thinking because I am rather old <laughs> and they younger and quicker and more clever. And when they enhance their intelligence, they go further and quicker. And the answer is yes, we have a very effective program. And we already tried. Thank you. So, colleagues, do you have any questions? Okay. Uh, so, th th thanks again to, to your presentation. I uh, also want to thank uh, Active Inference Institute that hosts today's meeting. And uh, during the October restart study group on role-based uh, approach and we introduce you, reach us out in Discord or uh, via 
uh, mail. Thank you very much and hope to see you in class. Goodbye. Thank you for the for your attention. <laughs>